Hello and welcome back to the channel and today we are reviewing Ben-Hur. So, I know you see the title and don't get me wrong, this movie is pretty good. Obviously AFI doesn't just put anything on their top 100 list. That being said, I do have a few problems with this movie. More on that later. First of all, I am back. It's nice to be back here. It was too long, but now that that is out of the way, let's start with talking about one of the greatest movies and wonderfully epic adventures ever put on the big screen. Ben-Hur. No, not that one. That one. Now, if you want me to review that other one, I guess just let me know. I'm sure I could fit it in. But this one, the real Ben-Hur, I do have some problems with. And I don't think that this is a movie that gets the whole excuse of, oh, it was the times it was made in and everybody else did it this way so they could get away with it. No, I don't think any movie should have that uh excuse for the problems I personally have with this movie. Now don't get me wrong, this is not a let's hate on Ben-Hur video. Quite the opposite. I really enjoyed this movie. I think it's really good and there are many aspects of it that are just downright beautiful. For instance, the acting. This is a stellar cast full of titans of the industry and people that just elevate the script as well as the other performances in the scenes. And the first one that I want to mention is Haya Harit. I hope I'm saying that r right. I'm sure I'm not. Please roast me in the comments. Who plays the main woman herself, Esther. Every time she's on screen, she glows. And I'm not talking that glow that they get because they put some strange filter on every woman in those old movies. Much like the person Esther is named after in the Bible, she exudes so much strength through her stillness. Power in her subtlety and... You can just tell that she holds that power over every other person in those scenes. Now, if you believe that it's just because she's beautiful, you are just seeing one aspect of it. She's extremely intelligent. Uh, you can tell that she just is choosing each of her words carefully and making sure that she says them with the right tone and inflection. She could definitely be a supervillain if she wasn't so good. The second one that I am going to mention is Stephen Boyd as Masala. This man puts the bad in Roman. I don't think that works. Anyway, he just commands so much attention from you as the audience. Even when Charlton Heston is there in the scene on the screen, he pretty much steals the show. I have never in my life been more happy, glad, that a villain died. Now, the casting is where I do have one of my problems with this movie. Hugh Griffith as Sheik. I really don't care what era you, uh, you are in, what time your movie was made, using brown face instead of casting someone with the correct ethnicity for the character is heresy of the highest order. Never forgiven. For the amazing casting that they did with this movie for everyone else it seems, this one is a huge negative for the movie as a whole. Now I want to move on to directing. Directing is making the movie work. From the first draft to the final edit, the director has his hands on everything. And William Wyler truly puts out a masterpiece with this movie. From the glorious sets to the beautiful shots of 
the landscapes to the theme of revenge turned into forgiveness. It's all here, and it's all good. Now, one thing that I will say uh, is not necessarily a negative, but it's something that's very noticeable, to me at least, is that there's a lot of extra acting. I'm not going to go as far as to say it's overacting, but it does seem like they are possibly hamming it up for the camera. Again, I'm not calling it a negative, it's just something I was noticing quite a bit. Another thing that I have a problem with this movie is the length. Now, it's not that it's extremely long, it's that there are many moments in the movie that could have been cut out and the film wouldn't have changed in the slightest. One of these moments is this one. And in this one, the main character of Ben-Hur just has this small moment with some stable boy. I don't know what this kid is, but it has no meaning in the movie because we don't know who this kid is. We don't see the connection other than they're, I guess, both, you know, working with the horses. And we don't really care about this kid or Ben-Hur's moment with him. So it's one of those things that could have been taken out of the film and it would not have changed the movie in any way. There are more than a few moments in this movie that are like this, where I just scratch my head and say, mm, what was the decision there to keep this moment? Finally, I think it's appropriate to talk about the Jesus Christ part of this movie. This is one of those films that will be taught in schools and online and videos for a long time to come because this is how you do a subplot. This is how you do a B-plot. Weiler perfectly interweaves this section of the story with Ben-Hur's main plot of revenge and just has this wait patiently to have its time to shine. And, oh, does it shine. When Jesus comes into the story at the different points that he does, there is no question as to whether or not it was necessary. It's always necessary because this subplot truly fulfills the character of Judah Ben-Hur and his story. That's about all I have for this rather amazing film. I hadn't seen it in a very long time and was very happy with my decision to watch it for my return to YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, then maybe consider hitting the like button. And of course, subscribe if you're not already. I do have plans for the future of this channel with some possible rebranding and other stuff. Again, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.